Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about uh, infinite discontinuities. So um, that's our last type of discontinuity here. f of x has an infinite discontinuity at x equals c if and only if uh, limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is plus or minus infinity uh, and or uh, limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x is positive or negative infinity. So basically it's like a vertical asymptote. So um, you might, you might be thinking, what about the two-sided limit? Well, if both of these are positive infinity, or if both of these are negative infinity, then, you could, uh, then you'll have the two-sided limit there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, to have an infinite discontinuity, you just need to have one of these uh, be positive or negative infinity. And um, let's go ahead and look at some examples here. So example one, uh, we got this function here. So here is uh, y equals f of x, all right? So we got this function here. Now let's take a look at what's happening at uh, x equals 5. So see we have a vertical asymptote there. So let's take a look at the limits. Uh, limit as x approaches 5 from the left of f of x. What's happening there? Well as x comes into 5 from the left, we're on this blue curve here and y is going down, 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 down. So y just shoots off down to negative infinity. So there. So right away we can say we have an infinite discontinuity. Okay. But um, just for the sake of uh, completeness, let's also take a look at the right-hand limit. So limit as x approaches uh, 5 from the right of f of x equals what? Well, if we come into 5 from the right, um, y shooting all the way up here up to positive infinity. All right? So the left-hand limit is negative infinity. The right-hand limit is positive infinity. All right? But uh, either one of these limits by themselves is enough to say that there's an infinite discontinuity. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second example. Um, g of x equals x squared if x is less than or equal to negative 2, and it equals 1 over x plus 2 if x is greater than negative 2. So let's take a look at what's happening around negative 2. So we'll do a left-hand limit first. Uh, limit as x approaches uh, negative 2 from the left of g of x equals uh, limit as x approaches negative 2 so from the left. So if we approach negative 2 from the left, um, then x is always less than negative 2. So that means we're just on the first piece here. So this is going to be x squared. Uh, these parentheses aren't really required. Um, so direct substitution tells us, okay, that's going to be negative 2 squared, and negative 2 quantity squared is um, 4. Okay. So we don't know if we have an infinite discontinuity yet, okay, because this left-hand limit is 4. Um, now let's go ahead and do the right-hand limit. So left-hand limit was 4. Let me come over here uh, and do this, just because we're kind of running out of room down there. So limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right now of g of x uh, equals what? Equals the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. Um, if x is approaching negative 2 from the right, then x is always greater than negative 2. So that means we're on the second piece. So this is going to be 1 over x plus 2. All right? So uh, we know how to evaluate these, right? Uh, if x is approaching negative 2 from the right, then that means x is always greater than negative 2. Uh, therefore, x plus 2 is always greater than 0. So x plus 2 is approaching 0 from the right. So what's happening here is this guy is shooting off to positive infinity. So this limit is actually plus infinity. Um, so here, uh, because of this, because this right-hand limit is positive infinity, then uh, we have an infinite discontinuity. So um, that's example two. Just so we can kind of get an idea of what's happening here, let's uh, go ahead and erase. Uh, let's erase this stuff here, and let's just draw a quick picture of what g of x looks like. So it's kind of a weird function, um, but it's good to see just a picture real quick. So let's see, negative 2 is the uh, special point here. So here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. I'm going to need a new marker soon. All right, so if x is uh, less than or equal to negative 2, then we just have x squared. So negative 2 comma 4, um, that's going to be this point up here. So this pra uh, piece of the parabola up here. But if x equals negative 2, then we have this function 1 over x plus 2. So uh, 1 over x plus 2 has a vertical asymptote right here at x equals negative 2, right? Um, and then the function is actually going to look like 
Oh, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like this. 1 over x plus 2 is, uh, if x is greater than negative 2, then it's going to look like uh, this. Okay. So that's what this function kind of looks like. So it's really kind of goofy. Um, so uh, 1 over x plus 2, this piece over here corresponds to 1 over x plus 2 for x greater than negative 2. And then uh, it looks like x squared. So this piece is x squared for x less than or equal to negative 2. All right? So that's what g of x kind of looks like. And we can see here's a vertical asymptote, which uh, corresponds to our infinite discontinuity here. So that's example 2.